القربى والمساكين والمهاجرين في سبيل الله وليعفوا وليصفحوا ألا تحبون أن يغفر الله لكم والله غفور رحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد Respected viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As for our non Muslim viewers, may the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with all of you. Welcome to another episode of GIT's Perspectives. In our last episode, we spoke about happiness, and we said that happiness is an emotional state characterized by feelings of joy, contentment, satisfaction, and fulfillment. We also spoke about some very important tips towards achieving a happier and better life, including giving time to one's Lord, reading, learning, and applying the Quran, gratitude, contentment, and patience. Inshallah, today we will continue with some of these tips, starting with patience. With us tonight is Sheikh Abdul Alim Rahim. Sheikh, welcome to our program. Yes, and Sheikh, just to recap, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Quran, Whoever follows my guidance will not be misguided and he will not be miserable. Can you please just elaborate on this verse a bit? بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وعملا متقبلا يا رب العالمين أمين Respected viewers السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Don't all Muslim guests May the guidance of Allah سبحانه وتعالى be with all of you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed tells us in the Holy Quran فَمَنِ اتَّبَعَ هُدَايَ فَلَا يَضِلُّ وَلَا يَشْقَى Whoever follows my guidance then he will not be misguided he will not go astray and he will not be miserable and this is a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala God Almighty that whoever lives this life in the way he wants us to live then that person will be happy in this world, will live a happy and a satisfying life. And that's also a promise of happiness, everlasting happiness in the hereafter, in the eternal life hereafter. So it's a promise for goodness and happiness in this world and in the hereafter as well. Uh, and likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in another verse of the Holy Quran, فَمَنْ تَبِعَ هُدَايَ فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ And whoever follows my guidance, again, similar to the first verse, whoever follows my guidance, whoever follows my guidance, then they will have no fear, nor will they be sad. Again, a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will have no fear. They will not fear what is to come in the future because if they follow the way that God Almighty has designated for them to follow, then that will definitely lead to his pleasure and to eternal happiness in the hereafter. So that they will have no fear of the future, nor will they be sad about how they lived this, world, this life, about what happened in this world. They will not look back on their lives with regret so long as they are following the recipe for success and the recipe for happiness that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, has given. And hence, in the first episode, we said, give time to your Lord. Give time for my worship, dedicate yourself to my worship, and I will fill your heart 
or your chest with a richness and I will take care of your poverty. I will take care of your needs. I will alleviate your poverty. Uh, so this is a promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This, of course, does not uh, guarantee that, as we said before, everything will just be smooth sailing in life. Allah tells us that life will not be smooth sailing. And every one of us will have his own unique circumstances and challenges to deal with. However, the keys of happiness are within our grasp. Whether it is that uh, our circumstances are more challenging than others or we have uh, greater ease than others, the keys of happiness uh, are within our grasp. While some may be at the disposal of uh, one category of people or, or some people, some keys may be at the disposal of some, definitely other keys will be at the disposal of others. Not everybody will have the same keys to happiness. However, however, the one most important key to happiness and to success is within the grasp of every single person. What is that key? Our connection with our Lord. It doesn't matter what our circumstances in life. It doesn't matter how easy we have things or how difficult they are for us. We all have that most important key to happiness and that is our relationship with our Lord. No one has been deprived of this. So long as we have uh, sanity, so long as we have sanity, we have understanding, then the guidance is there at our disposal. For those who do not have sanity, they are not accountable. So uh, there again, there is no issue. But so long as we have sanity, we have understanding, we can understand, then the guidance is there at our disposal. Every single one of us has that. And if we have and we maintain, we try it, to build and maintain a good relationship with our Lord, then that promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is real. It is there for every single one of us, for this world and for the hereafter, that we will not be miserable in this world so long as we are following the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we will not grieve, we will not fear and we will not grieve in the hereafter, we will have ultimate happiness in enjoying the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in paradise, insha'Allah. Um, Shaykh, last week we, we touched a bit on patience, but um, I think there are some very important aspects of patience that we have yet to touch on in this episode, insha'Allah. Can you please shed some light on this, please? Okay, so we spoke about being grateful and being content, content with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us as one of the very important steps towards achieving happiness. That not all of us will be on the same plane where it concerns our worldly possessions, our worldly enjoyments, what we have. Uh, not, not all of us will be enjoying the same. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his infinite wisdom, he has placed us in different positions, in different situations, with different challenges to deal with. It is all by his wisdom. And he knows, as he tells us in the Holy Quran, that he does not place a burden on anyone more than he can bear. Whatever situation he has placed us in, he knows that we have the ability to deal with it. Uh, and so we emphasize the point that we need to count our blessings. We need to focus on the bounties, the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted each of us in our lives. And not to compare ourselves with others. If we are going to compare, let us compare ourselves with those who we think are less or have less sorry, than us. Who we are more fortunate than, who we have been more blessed than, where our worldly possessions and so on are concerned. So that if we do that, we are focusing on the positives, we realize how blessed we are then we have so much to be thankful for. We will be thankful to Allah and it will help us to be contented or, and to be content with what we have. And of course, that uh, contentment does not mean that we don't strive to make things better for ourselves. It just means that 
whilst making the effort to improve our circumstances and our situations, then we rely ultimately on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that whatever comes our way, this is the provision of Allah. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for us. And we are satisfied, we are content, we are pleased with that from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, that has to be balanced at the same time with patience. Gratitude and contentment on the one hand, patience on the other hand. Because definitely, most definitely, there are numerous challenges in life. There are numerous problems that people face. And again, everybody understands his and her unique situation. And we may look at situations or, or circumstances and challenges that we face and we say that, look, you know what? Uh, there's nobody else who is dealing with the challenge that I am dealing with. You know, even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was told this by the woman when he saw her crying by the graveside. And he said to her, Ittaqi Allah wa Be uh, mindful of Allah, fear Allah, and be patient. Because her child had passed away, her little child had passed away. And she said, and she was crying. She was crying in an uncontrollable way. And, uh, you know, in a way that was unbecoming as well, wailing and so on. And so the Prophet, peace be upon him, said to her, fear Allah and be patient her response to him was it ilayka anni move away from me fa innaka lam tusab bi musibati you haven't been afflicted with what i have been afflicted with this is the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he is the one who has been sent to be our guide to be our example to teach us but she said to him, you haven't been tested with what I have been tested with. So don't tell me, don't presume to tell me what I should do. You don't know what it's like to be in my situation. But of course, we know from the Prophet ﷺ from his life that all of his male children passed away as infants. All of his sons passed away as infants. They died uh, as small children. So definitely he understood what it was. Uh, uh, and what she was feeling. However, this was her reaction. And so he left and eventually she learned that he was the Prophet ﷺ and she came back to apologize to him. And the Prophet ﷺ then said to her, إِنَّمَا الصَّبْرُ عِنْدَ الصَّدْمَةِ الْأُولَى Verily, patience, the real patience is at the first uh, moments of shock at the time when you're first afflicted by the calamity, your response there is what determines how patient you are. Not after reacting and overreacting and then later on then you will uh, eventually calm down and say, well, okay, now I'm going to be patient. Real patience, uh, the test of a person's real patience is his or her reaction in the first initial stages of a test or a calamity that the person faces. Coming back to the point then, uh, we need to balance our gratitude and contentment on the one hand with patience on the other hand. And this will help us to be in a happier state of mind. Uh, Islam teaches us and tells us there are things that we do which will help us to achieve peace of mind, which will help us to be calm, to have tranquility, to take away the worries and the problems from our minds. And these are the things that we are focusing on as the keys to achieving happiness. Because as we have said, that this happiness is an emotional state uh, that is characterized by these feelings of joy and contentment and satisfaction and so on. And it does not necessarily mean that we will always be in this positive frame of mind, but that the positives the positive emotions should outweigh the negative emotions. And so this is what we are trying to achieve. And therefore, no doubt we will be afflicted with calamities. But how do we deal with calamities? Calamities, yes, they bring sadness to us. Uh, you know, they bring feelings of loss and, and, and worry and, and misery and so on. But how does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, guide us and instruct us to deal with calamities. He said, فَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ 
give glad tidings to those who are patient. He says, "Wala nablu wa nakum bishayin min al khawfi wal jooi wa naqsim min al awali wal anfusi wa thamarat." And definitely, we will test you. We will test you with something of fear and hunger, a loss of lives and wealth, fruits, and so on. Loss of different sorts. But he says what? وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ But give glad tidings to those who, in the face of that loss, in the face of that fear and that worry and those problems, give glad tidings to those who are patient, who respond with patience. How do they respond with patience? How do they demonstrate patience? الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ Those who, when they are afflicted with calamities, their first response is to turn to their Lord. It's to reflect that this is the decision of my Lord. إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ They say, we are, we belong to Allah and to Him we shall return. Everything is from Allah. Whatever I had uh, from which I am experiencing this loss or this test, this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. This wealth is from Allah. This child is from Allah. This property is from Allah. Whatever it is, it is from Allah. And we are going back to Him. And so we respond by uh, relating everything back to Allah, to the decision of Allah, to the wisdom of Allah, to the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that helps us to be patient. When we recognize and we understand this is the decision of my Lord and He knows best, then that will help us to be patient, to accept and to be positive about what we are facing, the challenge we are facing, while at the same time knowing that we will not be given a burden more than we can bear. Again, this is part of the qadr, the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says and Allah promises that those who respond in this way, they say, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. In another verse of the Quran, they say, hasbi Allahu wa ni'mal wakil, or hasbun Allahu wa ni'mal wakil. Allah is enough for us. And he is the best disposer, disposer of our affairs. Then Allah says, "Ulaika alayhim salawatun min Rabbihim wa rahma, wa ulaika humul muhtadun." Those who respond with patience, then they will have the blessings sent upon them from their Lord, and His mercy, His blessings, His mercy. And they are the guided ones. They are the ones who are acting based upon the guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent, that they respond with patience in the face of difficulties and calamities. So patience is extremely important, beloved brothers and sisters. Otherwise, how will we respond? When negatives come our way, when hardships come our way, how do we respond? We will respond by complaining, by being miserable, by focusing on all that we have lost, and that will only cause the situation to be worse. If we keep dwelling on what has happened, what we have lost, and how great this loss is, and we can see no positive in that situation, then we will only be miserable. Allah guides us in the verse that we said to focus on the positives. They, those who are patient, they will receive the blessings of Allah, His mercy, and they are the guided ones. And in other verses of the Quran, Allah tells us uh, that we will give the patient ones uh, their blessings without any limit. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, that we will give to the patient ones their blessings without any limit. That there is no limit to the, the blessings that those who uh, demonstrate patience that they will achieve. Focus. So Allah teaches us to focus on the positives. Yes, 
we will definitely be sad. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when his uh, son, his little son Ibrahim, passed away, he said, "Inna al-'ayna la tadma' wa inna al-qalb la yahzan or aw la yakhshah wa inna ala firaqik ya Ibrahim la mahzunun." Verily, the eye will shed tears and the heart will be saddened. Uh, and all of us oh, uh, uh, with, with your loss, O oh Ibrahim, we are saddened. But then he focused on the positive and he said, وَلَا نَقُولُ إِلَّا مَا يُرْضِي رَبَّنَا But in the face of that, we are not going to say anything except that which is pleasing to our Lord. And so Islam teaches us whilst in the difficulty and the calamity to still focus on the positive. And so if we attribute tests to the decree of Allah and to the wisdom of Allah and that Allah knows best what is good for us and that he will reward us for being patient, if we can focus on that positive, then inshallah it will be all the easier for us to overcome the challenges, the sadness and the negatives of the calamities inshallah. So patience in the face of hardships extremely important for us in order to be happy to maintain a positive frame of mind and of course there is the other aspect of patience or another aspect there are many aspects of patience but there is another aspect of patience that uh, Islam guides us uh, you know how to demonstrate it so that inshallah it will also uh, assist us to be to have a happier frame of mind and that is in our dealings with others that whenever we have dealings with other people there are and there will definitely be instances when we don't see eye to eye when uh, we probably get disagreements we see things differently we get differences of opinion uh, and so, you know, sometimes somebody does something we don't like, it makes us upset. How do we respond in these situations? So in our dealings, whether it's at, it's at home with our family members, our spouses, our children, our family members, or it's with our neighbors, or it's at our workplace, or wherever it is, whenever we're interacting with others, there will always be situations where we will get upset. But how do we deal with these circumstances? Again, Islam teaches us that we exercise patience in our dealings with people. And so the Prophet wasallam, peace be upon him, when a man came to ask for advice, and he knew that this was applicable to this person, and it is likewise applicable to every single one of us, he told him, لا تغضب, Do not get angry. The man asked again, Give me another piece of advice. He said, do not get angry. For a third time he asked, he said, do not get angry. So as much as he continued uh, repeating and asking for other advice, the Prophet wasallam kept repeating the same piece of advice. Do not get angry. Now, none of us is perfect. Uh, none of us is devoid of emotions we will inevitably at some time or the other get upset for one reason or another. But again, here Islam is teaching us we should try our best to control our emotions, not to let our emotions get out of hand, get away from us. And so uh, as much as possible, do not get angry. Because what happens when we get angry? We overreact. We overreact. And so we do not think in a level-headed way. To demonstrate this, the Prophet wasallam told us in hadith, he said, لا يقضي القاضي حين يقضي وهو غضبان. The judge, when he is about to make a ruling or a decision on any matter, he should not make a ruling when he is in a state of anger. 
This applies in any situation and with anyone who is in a position of authority who is going to make a ruling or a decision on an issue. But the Prophet wasallam here spoke about the judge because this is so crucial. A decision that he makes can affect the lives of people, you know, for a very long time. And so he said, the judge should not make a decision or a ruling when he is in a state of anger. Why? Because we might think that we are level-headed and we are calm and that we are thinking in a, in a logical way. Uh, but when a person is angry, his emotions are taking hold. They're getting the better of him. And he's looking at things in an emotional way sentimental way and so he becomes subjective his decision is not as objective as it needs to be and so the prophet sallallahu emphasized that he shouldn't make a decision in that state he didn't say that the judge should not ever be angry he said he shouldn't make a decision when he is in a state of anger he shouldn't make a ruling in that state and likewise we should learn from this in different aspects of life that you know, anger, it basically uh, affects our uh, clear thinking. And so uh, when we are dealing with others, we need to avoid as much as possible getting angry because that will lead us to say and to do rash things. It will lead us to be hasty in the things we say and in the things we do and the Prophet وسلم, said haste is from the shaitan. He said Al Ajalatu in a shaitan. He said calmness and one's taking one's time deliberateness is a blessing of Allah. Al Atani min Allah in another narration Al Anatu min Allah. Deliberateness, taking one's time, this is a blessing. It is a guidance from Allah so that we take our time, we look at the situation, we assess before we take steps, before we act. And the opposite, وَالْعَجَلَةُ مِنَ shaitan, And haste is from the devil. It is from shaitan. Why? He incites us to be hasty, to respond and to react in a hasty way because that breeds enmity. It breeds hatred. It sows the seeds of problems among people. And this is what the devil wants. He wants to create enmity, especially among those who should be close together. And so we need to be very uh, wise in the way we deal with situations. And so part of being or achieving this state of positive emotions and inshallah being happy is to avoid anger as much as possible. When we get angry, what do we do? We quarrel. We argue. We quarrel. We get into fights. How many crimes are not committed as a result of anger? How many homes are not broken? Divorces are done as a result of anger. Because we react in a hasty way without thinking when we become upset. And so when we get angry and uh, we get into problems, we get into quarrels, we get into fights, then obviously we cannot be happy. And if we are constantly in a state in which we are, we are like this, we, are, we, we quarrel some, then it's, it's difficult for us to be happy because we have no peace of mind. And happiness stems from that peace of mind uh, and that contentment that we're feeling. So if we don't have that, we can't be happy. So we need to avoid anger as much as possible. And this is a part of the patience that we exercise. We can uh, expand that concept of patience to include so many different aspects of our good akhlaq, of good character, good behavior in the way we deal with others. And this is what Islam has emphasized the Prophet, peace be upon him, has told us, وَخَالِقِنْ نَاسَ بِخُلُقٍ حَسَنٍ And behave towards people with good akhlaq. And this, inshallah, will help us to be happy. We see it. 
when you have uh, good relations with others, you are at peace. You know, especially with those who are close around you. When you have good relations with those around you, uh, especially those who are close to you, uh, then you're happy. And perhaps that leads us to the other point uh, that we need to uh, live well with those who are close to us. This is extremely important for us to be happy. We need to live well with those who are close to us. So the closest to us are who? They are the members of our household, our spouses, our children, our siblings, those who are around us, within our household, and then expand the circle to our relatives, our close relatives. Let's, we have to learn to live well with our relatives because they are people who have the greatest rights over us. Beginning with our parents, beginning with our parents and uh, all of the others who are close around us, who are closely related to us uh, by blood, first of all, then we are required to live well with them. It's a duty Islamically, and it also helps us to achieve the state of peace uh, and harmony. And inshallah, from that, we can uh, be in a much happier state of mind. Uh, Islam also emphasizes the rights of the neighbor, to live well with the neighbor who is around us. He said, Man kana, the Prophet wasallam told us, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir fal yukrim jara. Whoever believes in Allah and the last day, then let him honor his guest. So, those who are closest to us, as I said, they deserve uh, our goodness, they deserve our ihsan, and when we have that good relationship with them, then inshallah, we will have that peace of mind. You know, if spouses are always quarreling, then there is no happiness in the womb. There is no peace in the home. And then the, the easiest thing for a person to do to achieve peace of mind is to do what? Is to leave the home. So the person tries to escape from the home as much as possible. And if the parents are always in this state of bickering and quarreling, then the children will try to escape and to avoid them as much as possible. So, uh, that peace of mind within the home, it is extremely important again to our happiness. And, and so we have to work to nurture that atmosphere where we can have that peace, that peace, that tranquility, that calm, and so we have to strive as much as possible to, to deal with one another with good akhlaq, fulfill the rights of one another, try to have that good relationship. Uh, it may not always be easy to do that when, you know, a person behaves in an unreasonable way. Sometimes some people can be unreasonable in the way they behave. And as much as we want to try to have a good relationship with that person, then it is not really uh, forthcoming. It is not really practical or achievable because of the attitude of the other person. Allah knows best. We all have these challenges to deal with. You know, for some people in their homes, for some people in their workplace, for some people with their neighbors or their, uh, you know, some friends, whoever. Uh, we have these challenges to deal with. We can't run away from it. We are all different in the way we behave and the way we see things. But we have to try to be as positive as we can. And there is a word that is nowadays, uh, you know, uh, being used quite a lot get out of toxic relationships. Keep away from toxic people. Uh, this has its own wisdom in it, that we try our best to deal uh, with people in, the, in a positive way, to have good relationships with them. But then, again, Islam is a practical way of life. 
if there comes a point where it is no longer practical, it is no longer realistic to deal with someone, uh, you know, in, or, or it's not achievable, it's not achievable to say that we'll, okay, we'll have a good relationship with someone, then we have to do what is best for that relationship. We need to assess the relationship. Is it one that is unbreakable? You know, it's not just enough to say, well, okay, get away from toxic people, even if it's my close relative. No, no, we, we cannot just approach things in this way. We need to assess the type of relationship. Is this a relationship that is breakable or not in the eyes of God Almighty, in the sight of God Almighty? Islamically, is this a relationship that is breakable or not? If it is a relationship with our close relatives, then that's an unbreakable relationship. It's an unbreakable relationship in the sense that we cannot say, well, okay, I'm going to cut off ties. Because Islam teaches us we should not ever cut off ties of relationship with others. If they cut off with us, we should still try to maintain those ties as much as possible, even if it is just on the basis of greetings, even if it is just to say a kind word or a nice word. Let the other person be the one who cuts off. You don't cut off your relationship with the person. That's a relative. But there are others who that relationship is not as binding. And so if it is a toxic one, if it is one that will make us miserable, then by all means, let's keep our distance. So, But we need to know the type and the nature of the relationship, whether it is one that is breakable or not. So as I said, when we have good relationships with those around us, when we try our best to deal with people with good akhlaq, then inshallah, that will lend itself to tranquility and peace of mind, and inshallah, it will help us to be happier. When we have a quarrel with someone, we know how we feel inside. We know that it leaves us in a state of uneasiness. Uh, you know, there's a void there. There's something missing. You know, we can't be uh, calm. We can't uh, be happy when we have a, a quarrel or a problem with someone. Uh, and so to assist and to help along the way of achieving this happiness, we need to work to have good relationships with those around us. That's from a practical perspective. And then there is a spiritual aspect to this as well. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses the person who maintains good ties of kinship with his relatives. Uh, the closest persons or people to us are our parents. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us we need to thank him and we need to thank our parents. Anushkurli wali walidik. Be grateful to me and to your parents. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, told us when he was asked, who is the person who is most deserving of my good company in this world? He said, who is that? Ummuka, your mother, then your mother, then your mother, then your father. The mother has uh, triple, basically, the amount of rights to good companionship in this world. Uh, over the father, then uh, so much more over others. And so from an Islamic perspective, from a spiritual perspective, when we maintain these ties, when we try to live well with our relatives, happiness comes our way. Why? Because Allah brings ease to us. Allah brings ease to us. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, told us in a hadith, he said, Man ahabba Whoever of you would like that Allah expands his provisions for him, gives him more and ease where his provisions in this world are concerned, and that he should give him a good reputation, a good mention, that he should have a good name, then let him maintain good ties of kinship with his relatives. Let him 
maintain the ties of kinship and maintain good connections and relationships with his relatives. Allah will grant him this reward. He will expand his uh, pro provisions and he will give him a good name. He will give him a good mention even after his demise. People will speak well about him. Let him maintain good ties of kinship. So we're not just looking at the physical benefit or the tangible benefit we get in this world. We're looking also ultimately at the spiritual benefit that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places there. We might not see a direct connection between maintaining good ties and being happy. But Allah is telling us that when we maintain those ties, He will create ease for us. And if He's creating ease, then this, inshallah, is part of the road towards happiness as well. And Shaykh, um, under the point that you mentioned about ties with, the, ties with our relatives being unbreakable, um, it brings to mind the incident of Abu Bakr anhu, with one of his relatives who was involved in the slander of his daughter, the wife of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Aisha radiallahu anha. And um, can you please elaborate? Or right, definitely. This is a beautiful example of how even, even when uh, people deal with, you know, relatives may deal with us in a way that we find unacceptable. They overstep bounds that they are not, the, uh, and boundaries that they are not supposed to. They infringe upon our rights. Still, uh, we cannot go to extremes in retaliating, in responding or, or reacting in a way that breaks off those ties. So again, uh, as, as you rightly mentioned, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, He uh, reminded Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, this great man, this great companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the greatest and the best person in this ummah after Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, And look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu establishing his status and his position and his, uh, uh, and his righteousness. He said, Do not let the people of goodness, of generosity, and uh, those who have been blessed by their Lord, referring to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu here, ayyutu ulil qurba وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَالْمُهَاجِرِينَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ uh, Do not let those people swear that they will no longer give to أُولِي الْقُرْبَى to the people of relations to them who are related to them and those who are poor and those who have migrated in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَالْيَعْفُوا وَالْيَصْفَحُوا but rather let them forgive and pardon would you not like that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives you in return? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu here that despite what this person has done, slandering your daughter's name, and this is the pure and innocent wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they went to this extreme of slandering her name. Do not let that, even that, cause you to break off ties with this person and swear that you will no longer help him or give to him but rather forgive and overlook because Allah will forgive you in return. So, unbreakable ties. And so we need to look at things from the perspective of the deen of Allah. When we assess relationships, we don't, as I said, generalize and say, well, okay, this is a toxic relationship, this is a toxic person, I'm going to avoid and keep away from that person. We need to look at it and assess the type of relationship. How am I related to this person? If this is by blood, then this is unbreakable. I have to find a way to deal with it. It might be wise not to be too cozy in certain relationships, but you know, to keep a little bit of distance, but at the same time, not to completely break off ties. Give salam, be nice, try to assist in whatever way we can, and Allah will bless us and enjoy. And Shaykh, maintaining the ties of kinship is one of the things that people really underestimate 
and pay little attention to but it is actually very important as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said in a hadith that it is one of the things that will help us to go to Jannah as he said Afshu salam wa atrimu ta'am wa silu al-arham wa sallu fi layli wa nasu niyam tadkhulu al-jannah bi salam aw kama qala alayhi salatu wa salam Definitely again beautiful keys to achieving the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of them, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, is to maintain ties of kinship with your relatives. Spread salam among people, feed the poor, pray to your Lord in the night, and stay or, or maintain good ties of relationship with your family members. You will enter the Jannah of your Lord with safety and security, being saved from his punishment. Um, Sheikh, I think, I think that's all the time we have for today. So, inshallah, we will stop there today and we will continue in our next episode, inshallah, with earning from a halal source and staying away and being honest and upright in our business dealings. So, we have spoken today about patience with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, patience in our dealings with others, and maintaining the ties of kinship. Uh, so that's all the time we have for today. Inshallah, in our next episode, we will continue with some more tips to achieving a happier and better life, inshallah. Until next time, may the, may the peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with all of you. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته رب العالمين يا رحمن يا رحيم لا إله إلا الله الله سبحانه وتعالى tells us something amazing you know, sometimes we desperately want something, we think it's good for us, we really feel we would like it, and Allah knows that it is not good for you. So Allah says, sometimes you dislike something and He knows it's better for you. And sometimes you love something and He knows it's not good for you. So He keeps you towards that which is always beneficial. He has your back, basically. So it's amazing how Allah says in, Verse number 216. Sometimes you don't like something. It's better for you. So sometimes you like something and it's not good for you. Let's take a look at the crises we are facing. We have a situation where the world has changed. Everything has turned upside down. People are struggling. People are complaining. People are being infected and affected. People have lost their jobs. People don't know where they're going to get the next morsel of food from in some cases and so much more. Allah says, you know what? If all of that brought you closer to me, it was better for you. If all of that brought you closer to me, it was better for you. And sometimes, we have made you lose a job because we know that if you open your own business, you will make much more money than the salary you were getting. So we made sure you lost that job. We did you a favor, but you cried for a while. The minute you got up and realized the favor of Allah, that's the very minute you began to achieve and receive the comfort. Sometimes you lose in terms of marriage, perhaps a divorce, perhaps you lost your spouse. Do you know that maybe the Almighty wants to give you someone 10 times better? And that's why the Almighty made you go through something you thought was so bad for you. Allah says, no, you don't know, we know. When you leave it to us and you just did your best and continue to do your best, we will make sure that you have actually achieved the comfort in the long run. So my brothers and sisters, learn to surrender to the will of Allah. Have you tried your best? Yes, you did. Then don't worry. The rest is going to come. Have faith. Have conviction. Build that faith and conviction. If Allah wanted you somewhere, there's nowhere else you're going to be. And if Allah did not want you somewhere, you're never ever going to be there. Remember that. A'udhu billahi minash rajeem بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم
ان الذين يرمون المحصنات الغافلات المؤمنات لعنوا في الدنيا والاخره ولهم عذاب عظيم يوم تشهد عليهم السنتهم وايديهم وارجلهم بما كانوا يعملون يومئذ يوفيهم الله دينهم الحق ويعلمون ان الله هو الحق المبين الخبيثات للخبيثين والخبيثون للخبيثات والطيبات للطيبين والطيبون للطيبات أولئك مبرؤون من ورزق كريم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تدخلوا بيوتا غير بيوتكم حتى تستأنسوا وتسلموا على أهلها ذلكم خير لكم لعلكم تذكرون فإن لم تجدوا فيها أحدا فلا تدخلوها حتى يؤذن لكم وإن قيل لكم ارجعوا فارجعوا هو أزكى لكم والله بما تعملون عليم ليس عليكم جناح أن تدخلوا بيوتا غير مسكونة فيها متاع لكم والله يعلم ما تبدون وما تكتمون قل للمؤمنين يغضوا من أبصارهم ويحفظوا فروجهم ذلك أزكى لهم إن الله خبير بما يصنعون وقل للمؤمنات يغضضن من أبصارهن ويحفظن فروجهن ولا يبدين زينتهن إلا ما ظهر منها وليضربن بخمرهن على جيوبهن ولا يبدين زينتهن إلا لبعولتهن أو آبائهن أو آبائهن أو آباء بعولتهن أو آباء إخوانهن أو بني إخوانهن أو بني أخواتهن أو نسائهن أو ما ملكت أيمانهن أو التابعين غير أولي الإربة من الرجال أو الطفل أو الطفل طفل الذين لم يظهروا على عورات النساء ولا يضربن بأرجلهن ليعلم ما يخفين من زينتهن وتوبوا إلى الله جميعا أيها المؤمنون وتوبوا إلى الله جميعا أيها المؤمنون لعلكم تفلحون شكرا يا ربي